Hi there, this is Mike from ATB Guitars in Cheltenham in the UK and this video is number four in a series of my personal favourite guitars we have in the store right now. I'm going to do five of them and there'll be one bonus cheap one at the end, so stay tuned. Okay, first guitar up, we have this beautiful 1962 Fender Stratocaster uh, in mint condition, and I'm, I'm gonna explain why I'm calling it in mint condition in a bit. But um, this is a refin by a chap called Ted Lee, and there's a fascinating story behind this particular Strat. So, it's a 1962 slab board, um, it was uh, bought by uh, the previous owner's grandfather and um, unfortunately before uh, he could hand it to his son, he died. Um, so a, a couple of years after that, the shop, which was Mamelocks in Manchester, tracked down the son, phoned him up and said, we've got a guitar here for you. So that must have been a, a bit of a surprise. So he went along and collected it. Um, and he played it a bit. Um, this, this guy doesn't really play that much at all. In fact, I think he just plays D, basically, look, looking by the small amount of fretware on there. But anyway, uh, later on in the 60s, he decided that he, he wanted to change a color on it. So he sent it back to Mamelocks, and Mamelock got um, Ted Lee to refinish it in the late 60s, early 70s. Now, Ted Lee, is the person who did pretty much all of the um, Selma refinishes in the 60s. And uh, he had a workshop up north and uh, he was um, doing a lot of guitars. In fact, there's a really good article written by our friend Martin Kelly on Reverb about, uh, about Ted Lee and about the Selma refinishes in general. If you were uh, ever wondering about these Selma refinishes, I suggest you read that article by Martin Kelly and uh, you'll learn a lot about it. So, after he had it refinished in the late 60s, early 70s, um, he, he basically stored it in its case and he never used it. Um, so the, the, the finish is, is checked, you probably can't see this on the camera, but there's a bit of checking on the finish but the rest of it is absolutely mint. The, the guard is this uh, gray color, which is what they look like when it was new. When Ted Lee refinished it, there was no um, clear coat applied, so it's still this um, pristine white color. Um, the plastic looks brand new. The metal hardware looks pretty much brand new. Um, the decal is interesting because it's, it's the wrong decal for this era, but um, Back in the 60s, you had very limited choice on what you could put your decals on. And um, it, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, inside, it's, it's all pretty much original inside, but obviously it's been refinished, so there has been some solder um, remade inside. But it's a killer guitar. Um, it plays like a new guitar and um, it's got such a fascinating story and comes with a Selma case as well, which is uh, always pretty cool. Right then, number two in our selection of my favorite guitars in the store right now is this uh, Monster Gibson ES350 uh, from 1955. And uh, as you can see, it's quite a big guitar, so I'm just gonna move it down so you can see me a bit better. But this guitar is, is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it was made in 1955 and it's one of only 14 blondes made that year and uh, it's a very rare and desirable variant of the ES350. It's before they switched to the ES350 uh, thin line and it's a transition model with a standard four control layout with a toggle switch just like you'd expect to see. And uh, this one also has a tunematic bridge, whereas I would imagine most of them would have had the rosewood bridge. So this one was only made for literally a few months, and it's probably one of only, out of a 14, how many would have had a tunematic bridge? Pro probably maybe half. So 
it's an extremely rare guitar. Not only that, it's in wonderful condition. It's got a lovely um, figured top and sides. Um, it's in near mint condition as well. The fingerboard has pretty much zero wear. The original frets are pretty much perfect. There's hardly any dings on it at all. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's a great instrument to play uh, acoustically or electrically plugged in. And uh, we, the last one we had of this sold pretty quickly. Um, and we don't see them very often at all. In fact, uh, as, as, you, uh, as I've just pointed out, there's only 14 made and uh, this is probably only one of seven with the uh, with the gold tunematic bridge so number two in my selection 1955 gibson es350 isn't it gorgeous okay so just as an aside um for anyone who's um noticed that i'm actually wearing uh the first version of our t-shirts atb guitar t-shirts um the design on the front is uh, a Bauhaus-inspired theme, and um, it's got, uh, as you can see, uh, a colourful guitar there. Um, we, we've got various sizes in stock, um, and we've got two different designs. We've got this design with the uh, coloured theme on the front, and we've also got this design with uh, ATB Guitars logo on the front and uh, the coloured design on the back. So you can take your pick. They're all made out of the highest quality cotton we could find and they feel lovely, soft, and um, they're available on our website right now. And until the end of April, we're actually doing free worldwide shipping just until the end of April. So uh, if you like these, um, please head to our website and um, buy some. Okay. So number three in my selection of my personal favourites here is this um, very nice 1967 Rickenbacker model 1997 six string. And um, what makes this quite special is, uh, as people who know Ricks have probably noticed, it's got the F holes here, which makes it a uh, Rose Morris version of this uh, particular Rickenbacker. Now, Rose and Morris were the distributors of Rick and Becker in the 60s, and uh, their guitars are famously used by people like Pete Townsend. Um, I believe one of the Beatles used them as well. And uh, all their guitars, you can identify Rose Morris by having the F hole, rather than the slash hole which American made and American sold Rick and Beckers would have. So it's a, it's a pretty cool feature. This one is uh, all original. It's in good condition. Um, you can see on the back, it does have um, some play wear, uh, which, is, which is cool. It means it's been used, so it does sound very good. And um, it's all structurally intact as well, which is not always the case with these Rickenbeckers. There's no breaks, there's no cracks, no repairs on it. It's just a, a great sounding Rickenbacker from an awesome period in their build and uh, a rare and sought after Rose Morris version. Number four in my personal selection of my favorite guitars we have right now is this very cool 1966 Gibson SG Special in Polaris White. Um, it's, uh, it's not very often we come across these. We, uh, we see SG Juniors in Polaris White. They're a little bit more common, but um, not very often do we get um, SG specials in. And this one is, is very cool. It's, it's very nice. Um, it's got, um, it's, it's all original. It's got um, chrome hardware, which is what you'd expect in 66. This one also has got um, quite a full feeling neck to it as well. So it's not like the um, slim taper necks, which came along uh, probably just a few months or uh, next or next year um, into this model range. Um, it's got the narrow nut, which it would have for a 1966, but um, the neck is quite big, so it doesn't feel like it's got a narrow nut because of the fuller feeling of the neck. So it's a very comfortable guitar to play. Um, it's all original. It, we do have the whammy bar and the trem block in the case. It's just the way this one's been set up. The frets are in uh, lovely condition. They're original. 
and the fingerboard again is in uh, is in very nice condition. The original finish is good, as you can see. It's yellowed slightly on on the back mainly, um, and but it's all the original finish with no oversprays, no touch up at all, and uh, it's it's a pretty cool guitar in my opinion. Okay, number five in my selection of my favourite guitars in the store right now is this gorgeous 1966 Fender Precision Bass in original Fiesta Red. Now, you occasionally see um, jazz basses in custom colours, but P basses you don't often see in custom colours. I guess the reason for that was uh, jazz basses were the top of the range in the bass section of Fender and people were more inclined to pay the extra 5% to get a custom colour than uh, P bass players at the time. So custom colour P basses are a lot rarer than custom colour jazz basses and uh, this in Fiesta Red is one of very few which I've seen in this colour. Um, and it's, it's stunning, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's all original, no finish issues at all. Original finish, no touch-ups, um, original neck finish. Um, everything is original on this hardware. Pit guard, plastics, uh, the case is original. And uh, it's a beautiful guitar to play as well. Very nice, low action, classic um, P bass growl and with the Fiesta Red finish, it's uh, uber cool as well, I think. So uh, I, I personally think this is the um, best base, or one of the two best bases we have in the store at the moment, and uh, one of our personal favorites. Goes very well with our recent Ampeg B15 purchase, which uh, you'll see on the website soon. Okay, so the final guitar of this video is um, what I refer to as the um, Bargain Basement. And uh, this is a 1960 Gibson ES330. Now, um, we've got it priced at 6995 um, The last original 1960 we sold for uh, nearly 12000 so this is quite a steal. And uh, there are a couple of issues, which I'm just about to explain to you, but overall, if you're looking for a dot neck um, ES330 in original finish, uh, then this is probably gonna be um, the cheapest you'll find. Um, so, what are the issues? Right, well, first of all, you can see it's got a replacement pit guard, a modern pit guard um, is on there. Um, the back pickup, I believe, Let's check the description on the website, but I think it's the back pickup has been um, rewound by our good friends at Monty's Guitars here in Cheltenham, um, who do a fantastic job, by the way. Um, and uh, it's got the original finish, but um, on the back of the neck here, there's some overspray. Now, there's no signs of a headstock repair, but something has gone on around here, around the neck, whether it's a neck reset or some kind of neck repair, we, we don't know. In fact, we'll never know without stripping a finish off, which is something we're not going to do, obviously. So uh, we've priced it accordingly. Um, some finish issue is going on down here. We don't know what it is, but uh, we can't feel anything. We can't see anything. And uh, it's, Apart from that, it's, it's a really cool guitar at a very reasonable price. It plays well, it's been set up really good. Um, it's, got, it's got a slightly later ABR1, which is chrome plated. It should obviously be nickel at this point. Um, apart from that, I think it's pretty much all there. It's, got, it's even got the original um, ivory white um, strap peg, no strap button on the heel. And um, it's got the original tuners by the look of it. So it's it's a very cool guitar at a reasonable price and now that I've mentioned it on this video then um, it might not be here for much longer. If you're after a 330 then uh, this is a pretty good deal in my opinion. Okay well thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my personal selection of, our, of my favourite guitars in the store right now and um, if you like it please like, comment below or subscribe or do all three if you like. Um, buy some t-shirts from us, they're available on our website with free shipping until the end of April, end of April 2024 this is, in case you're watching this um, video 
a year later or two, year, two years later. Um, so uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, have a great time and uh, I look forward to seeing you in our next video.